Welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast, featuring inspiring interviews with Etsy shop owners, hosted by Ijama Elazu. Hi, and welcome to the Etsy Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Ijama, and I thank you for joining me for another episode. If you're in the U.S., I hope you had a really nice Thanksgiving. My guest this week is Divine, and she runs the Etsy shop, two Etsy shops, Hottie House and Uncommon Folk. And I'm so glad to have you on the podcast, Divine. Thank you so much for being my guest and welcome. Thank you for having me. You are so welcome. So before we start, can you just give us a little bit of information about who you are and what you do on Etsy? Um, all right. Um, as you said, my name is Divine, and I started um, in 2011 with jewelry. I was a metal sculptor before then. I sculpted these huge, elaborate works out of wire. They would take forever and my hands would be bloody and it was just a big bloody mess after a while. And so I decided to go into smaller uh, wearable sculptures, wire jewelry. And um, that's how I began um, on Etsy back in 2011. And um, now I've moved on to selling vintage clothing. So I have a question about that divine. Um, one, was it hard for you to make the switch from selling mainly jewelry and handcrafted items to now selling vintage clothing? Or do you, was it an easy transition? For me, it was the most natural thing in the world because the whole time I was selling jewelry um, on Etsy, I was lurking around in the vintage stores, spending all of my profits on vintage clothing. <laughs> I, I developed quite a huge dress habit and was just, you know, really inspired by, you know, the vintage sellers. So um, it was, yeah, it was a really easy transition for me. I just, I fell into it pretty naturally. Okay. Now, is there a reason you didn't combine the vintage clothing with the jewelry? Do you think that it makes a difference or it makes it easier for shoppers to find you or shop in your in your stores because you focus on very specific things in each one? Um, yeah, I definitely think that's true. And um, also, I'm not sure if my style of jewelry necessarily goes with vintage clothing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's funny. I um, I was doing, like, a, a way different, almost steampunk style of jewelry when I first started. And um, a lot of my taste in vintage is, I, like, I love, like, polyester and loud prints. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like, yeah. things, things that didn't really go with, like, this steam, more steampunk look. So I thought it was probably best to keep them separate. Okay. And what, uh, for you, how are the logistics of running two Etsy shops? I know I, I did it at one point and at one point I had three and I think I was losing my mind, but um, <laughs> I know everyone is different. How is it for you running more than one shop? I hear you because I ran three for a while. I was running mm -hmm. one for a friend of mine and um, I basically use two browsers and just stay signed in to both okay. shops and I just jump back and forth between browsers. Yeah. So that helps, you know, so you don't have to like stop and like log in and oh yeah, what's my password? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I eventually um, made all of them have the same password. Yeah, then, <laughs> I know. So that I wouldn't have to, you know, think, okay, what was this one? Because I would try and get clever with the passwords and then I would always get locked out. So oh, I, I know. Yeah. So I changed it. They say everything. you're not supposed to do that, but I do it too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's just easier. Yeah. Uh, now, hopefully somebody doesn't try and hack in, but anyway. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're going to go change our passwords after Yes. This. Yeah. And then the other thing I would do, I, I use an Apple computer and in Safari it doesn't remember or at, at least I don't know how to set it to remember logins so oh, I would use nice. Chrome because Chrome the Chrome browser will remember if you start to type in a, like a your username it will auto complete it for you and so that helped because I was like okay which one do I want to go in and I would start with S and it would say oh is this the one you want I'm like yeah that's the one I want thank you yeah. <laughs> Whereas with Safari browser, it, it 
doesn't do that. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been on Etsy now all together for six years. Yeah. What, how do you think um, the changes that you've seen on Etsy have made it either a better place for you to sell or or a harder place for you to sell and I know for everyone is different some people have a harder time with the changes and some people really enjoy the changes that are that they're making on the platform I'm gonna be one of the complainers I totally okay. fall in the complainer okay. camp I, I like signed the petition I, I I really don't like them personally I don't understand the stats very well anymore and um, it seems like every time they make a big change it's it's just, you know, it's like a huge um, problem to like relearn everything and, yeah. and figure it all out when it was working fine, yes. you know. So I, I'm not I'm not very happy with the changes. Um, I started looking at some other platforms and, mm. you know, just because I was like, I'm going to not keep all of my eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. But um, um, so far, nothing's as good as Etsy to my to my mind, at least yeah. not yet, you know, so, but, um, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm worried about the, what's happening with Etsy. I'm concerned for sure. Yeah, I hear you. And I know there's a lot of concern in, you know, in the community and, and I understand what you mean about when certain changes happen, especially the big ones, that yeah. learning curve to try and figure out, okay, what works now? And then the fear I have is, okay, well, how long is this going to be working because something else is going to change again and all year I know I've been holding my breath because early in the year they had said that they were revamping search in 2017 and um, it's just been a recurring theme is oh we're we're changing Etsy search and I keep thinking okay is it changed yet is this mm -hmm. the end are there more changes coming I'm like wait we're in November so mm -hmm. either it's done or it's not done or I don't know. Everyone kind of went side, not everyone, but I mean on the Etsy side. So yeah, I do hear you in that the changes, um, the adjustments takes some getting used to. Yeah, for sure. And I've had lots of, um, I have lots of friends who sell on Etsy and mm -hmm. people have said that their sales have dropped since these, and I've noticed that things have slowed down for me too. Um, yeah. I'm not a huge seller, but, um, you know, so it hurts definitely when, you know, your sales start dropping and you're like, can people not find me, you know, find me anymore? Cause it's changing for the customers as well. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, yeah, it is changing for them. And I know, I, I think I've mentioned this once before on the podcast. I know that for me, I, I can tell that there are some changes because there are some weeks where um, I'll get back to back sales, multiple sales a day. And it seems like they just came out of nowhere. And then I'll go for like an entire week. And I even forget that I'm selling on Etsy because I get, you know, nothing. And then the mm -hmm. week after, you know, you know, it's like back to back sales in one day, multiple days in a row. And so for me, I, I just feel like, OK, whenever that happens, I think, OK, they're doing something in search and whatever they just did favored me. And then, you know, the next week, if nothing happens, I'm like, OK, well, whatever they just changed, maybe it doesn't favor me as much. Maybe I need to make some changes to what I'm doing. So it's hard to keep up. Yeah. It's the same for me too. It's the same thing. It's really crazy that all the sales come at once and you're all, yay, I'm finally making yeah. it. You know? <laughs> and it's all, it totally dries up. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. So how did you first discover Etsy? Um, I actually first discovered it because I was looking to get out of the sculptures and I wanted to sell jewelry. Mm -hmm. And um, I think someone recommended it. I think it was a friend of mine who's like, oh, you should check out Etsy. And I I did. And I was like, wow, this is great. I'd never heard of it before. I'd only ever been on eBay and I never looked back. Now it's a huge part of my life. Yeah. yeah. Do you find yourself making detours to go on sourcing trips just because you enjoy, enjoy what you sell so much and in particular with the vintage clothing? Yeah, I'm, I am like such a clothes hound. I just, I love going through thrift stores and estate sales and just all of that. And, um, I'm really passionate about the vintage for sure. It's, um, you know, it's, 
even more so than the jewelry. The whole time I was selling jewelry, it was just to buy vintage clothing. I'm like completely <laughs> addicted to it. Yeah. So, yeah. I've got, I've got a ridiculous closet. It's just like stuffed to the gills. <laughs> and I just keep trying to make more room, you know? Like, yeah. And is that all for, for clothing that you want to sell or is that for your own personal uh, my own, <laughs> my own okay. personal, but I do sell things like, um, if I can clear it past my daughter, she's waiting for me to, to kick off so she can inherit my clothing collection. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so I have to clear it. Like, can I sell this? And yeah, but yeah, I, I, I do. I have a crazy habit. I just, I love to dress up. It's just, uh, you know, really fun. So, yeah. Now, mm-hmm. one thing I like that I, um, in, in your, in your Etsy shop and in particular the hottie house is your photography. You take it to a whole other level. Like it looks like you have modeling shoots where you're on location and they're very styled and not just styled like, okay, let's do an outdoor shot. It's like, it goes with the clothing. How much time and how much effort do you put into the photography? I am so glad you brought that up because through this whole clothing experience, I've discovered a whole new medium that I'd never considered before, which oh. is fashion photography. And, and I'm not a trained photographer at all. And I, and I don't take all the photos. I have lots of people with me, but, um, gosh, this, this goes through many parts, but yeah, I definitely love the whole fashion photography thing. And I've learned a lot about mo- like modeling and like, um, you know, and working it and, yeah. and, you know, and, and just everything it's been, it's been really awesome. I've, I'm totally passionate about that. And as far as the styling, I, um, I actually have been collaborating with, um, I, I live in a really artist centric community we have Mm -hmm. so many talented artists here in Humboldt it's crazy Mm -hmm. and um I know some really great girls Uh, um, I'll give them a shout out Mm -hmm. um Lauren from Alter Ego Design and um Christina Anastasia from Christina Anastasia Jewelry and Liskin Rossi from Knits and Pieces and Jamie from Cobra Vita um Oh gosh. And Amy from G's Louise, they're, they're all these amazing people and they, they all do like hats and fascinators and jewelry and they're all so talented. So we arrange these big photo shoots and these girls show up and we don't, we barely talk at all, but I bring the clothes, they bring the jewelry and the hats and the fascinators and stuff in it. And somehow it just all comes together. It's, it's actually kind of a miracle because <laughs> it's wow. crazy scene. Yeah. How often do you have the shoots? Um, I do the big shoots in the summer, okay. um, mostly because it's so rainy here. Oh, um, okay. So I, you know, spring and summer. So, you know, we'll have a couple big ones. And then I do like little satellite shoots where it's just me, um, you know, and a, and a model or two, you know, and someplace. There's there's so many beautiful backdrops here, too. It's, yes, it's really I can see. Yeah, it's a crazy, beautiful place. Yeah. So then, so because you collaborate with a number of different people, does everyone kind of use the shots of the models that highlight what they are selling? Or are they specifically all just for your clothing and then everyone just donates something for the shoot? Oh no, it's, it's a complete collaboration because we're all trying to sell our wares. So we all, we all, um, we all bring our cameras. I, I, um, I tend to arrange the shoots more because for me, it's the hardest to get my stuff there because I have to have a truck full of clothing and shoes. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, so many shoes just, (laughs) you know, so I bring all of that. Um, and then we kind of like, um, agree on a place and then, we um, arrange for however many photographers we can, you know, and then um, we usually have about five models okay. and um, we we all show up there and it's like this crazy dress up party yes. where <laughs> there's just girls running around. We have changing <laughs> screens and surfer changing tents and their shoes spread out like a mile long. And wow. um, and it's just a, it's a miracle that it comes together. But um, the jewelry makers and the fascinator makers, they they'll like see a girl walk up in a dress and they'll be like, Oh, I have the perfect piece of jewelry for that. Or, Oh, I have the perfect. Yeah. And it just comes together really organically. That is so nice. And so then, so then at the end of it, you have, um, 
probably, well, I shouldn't guess, but you have multiple pictures of each of the items that you want to, that you're, you're going to sell. So then I assume you do everything in chunks since you now have all your pictures. So then the next thing is to do your listings. How do you, I guess I'm trying to ask how you organize, um, how you organize getting everything from the photo shoot up to when it's, when it goes up on, on Etsy and it's listed. Um, yeah, I usually try to, um, uh, like I act as the center of that and, um, I give everybody USB like thumb drives mm -hmm. and I'm just like, dump all your pictures on here, dump all your pictures on here. And then, um, my models, I, I have to give them a shout out too. like the girls who model for me are yeah. so awesome and they, they volunteer, they do it for the pictures. So then I get all the pictures from the photographers and I, I have to make thumb drives for the models. Cause I, I sort them all out and put like all of, you know, this model's pictures on this thumb drive and that, mo you know, just every single picture. And then I send those to the girls and, and then they're paid. And then I, um, and then as far as, um, the photographers sharing things, um, we kind of, um, we kind of like trade them back and forth after the, the girls are paid off, you know, in their, in their photos. And then we, we like trade thumb drives back and forth to get the photos that we need. And then sometimes I'll be like working on a dress listing or something and I'll be like, oh, my God, Lauren's fascinator looks amazing here. And I'll, I'll like send her a picture. You know, you have to look at this one. But, you know, it's all a share and share yeah. alike kind of thing. And all the, the other people you mentioned, like the, the people who make the fascinators and, and the ones who bring their jewelry, do they all sell on Etsy as well? Um, not all of them. Um, okay. a lot of them do. Um, okay. um, Jamie from Cobra Vita studios does. Okay. And, um, Lauren from alter ego does, okay. um, Amy from G's Louise and, um, is that everybody? And then, um, one of my best photographers, she is so amazing. She should be a professional photographer is Liskin Rossi and she sells on Etsy. Um, she sells, she crochet or, or knits, I'm sorry. She knits and, um, makes origami shapes and, um, oh, yeah. sells like magnets and stuff. Yeah. Knits and pieces. She's the most amazing photographer. And oh, I just, I try not to ask her, her too many favors cause I don't want to burn her out and like have her avoid my calls or anything, but yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> Okay. Now, how did you get hooked up with this community of, of other entrepreneurs, especially creative, creative entrepreneurs and handmade, handmade um, business people? Do you do a lot of local business networking or did you meet them like through Etsy teams? Um, I actually met all of the local people here, um, just socially for the most part. Um, okay. like, like I said, there's so many artists here. You can't like throw a stone without hitting an artist. Mm -hmm. There's like, everybody is an artist here. And, um, so like a, a lot of these people I just knew socially and a few of them I've gotten to know just because I, I approached them like, Oh, I really, you know, I've seen your fascinators on Etsy and, and I've gotten to know them that way. Okay. Um, but yeah. And then the, a lot of the models, um, that I find I'll look on model mayhem. That's a really good way to like search for local models. And a lot of them will work time for print, which is, you know, they'll, they'll model for the photos. Okay. And, um, you know, I made like a model release, you know, to make it all legal and everything. And, um, yeah. And, um, and then so every once in a while, I'll like, I'll like see a girl, like in the thrift store or something. I'll be like, Oh my God, I feel really <laughs> creepy. But I'm like, have you ever considered being a model? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll give her my card. And I found her a few really good models that way too. Okay. That's bold of you. I, I'd be, I'd be scared to ask people and I'm afraid that they, like you said, that they would think I was a creep, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> I totally chicken out sometimes. I'm like, Oh, should I ask her? I don't know because it feels so <laughs> creepy, but most of them are flattered, you know? And, yeah. Yeah. Now you mentioned model mayhem. Is that a website that aspiring models can set up profiles on so that people who maybe want to use them to showcase their products can 
not rent them, but hire, hire. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, not rent. Hire. Totally. <laughs> yeah, model mayhem. And then you can browse. Like you can say, I'm looking for female or male models within a certain distance of my house. And all these local models will come up. And you can go through and look at their portfolios and be like, oh, she would look good in vintage clothing. Or, you know what I mean? I've, I've gotten a few of my best models that way. A few that have been with me from the beginning. And, and they're just such great girls. And they've just, you know, we've all become like a sisterhood of like fashion, you know, when we do these photo shoots, it's just an awesome collaboration between all of us. Very nice. Now, is it restricted to just your local area or can anyone who is listening to this look and see if there are any in their local area as well? Oh, anyone. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. It's Model Mayhem is, I, I don't know if it's international but it's, you know, like wherever you are, um, just look up Model Mayhem and and get yourself, you know, an account. And I, I'm there um, under clothing designer, even though I don't design clothing. I mostly right. look for clothing models. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And so you, you say, you know, and then and then you can just shop for models. It's, you know, if, if you're an Etsy seller and you would like to take it to the next level and see what you can do with photography, like there's there's like tons of girls out there who would you know, who would like to model your things. Okay. And for the most part, in exchange for the, they'll, they'll do it in exchange for the pictures. You don't, they don't, do a lot of them come with high price tags or it's more of a barter system? Um, it's more of a barter for the most part because most okay. of them are beginning models, but sometimes they'll say, like you'll see when you pull up their profile, they'll, they'll either be no unpaid jobs, or but, mm-hmm. but a lot of them are like, we're open to time for print. You know, most of them are beginning models and they, okay. they want to learn. And for them, like if you can get, like give them really good pictures, like that's portfolio material, which, you know, if they wanted to hire a photographer, it would be like 150, 200 bucks to get, you know, one oh, photo shoot right. like that. Yeah. So for them, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's like barter. It's worth money if you, if you can provide good photos. Okay. I like that. I will, yeah. I will link to Model Mayhem in the resources for this episode. So if anyone wants to go check them out, I'll put their, a link to their website so you can do that. That sounds like a really good way to get good pictures and save money. And can you find um, kid models too? Like if somebody does like kid clothing or baby accessories? Um, yeah, not so much on Model Mayhem. I think okay. they're, I mean, I found like one of my models, she was 15 when I got her off there. And, um, you know, I had her, her parents come with her, you know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, anybody's yeah. kid, like without their guardian there. But like, yeah. um, but um, yeah, but I, I do kid models. I mostly ask um, friends, like I've got yeah. some great kid models in there. Um, I want to give out a shout out to Lily and Katana Aww. and, um, and Jazzly. They're, they're awesome. And they're, they're friends, kids, you know what I mean? But yeah. they, they bring it. It's so cute to watch the, <laughs> the kids model. They're awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do love your pictures. So please go check out Divine's um, pictures. Um, They're really, really nice. Like the scenery and the whole setup looks very good. Cool. Now, when you were first starting out on Etsy, were you all just gung-ho, like you just jumped right in there? Or did you have any reservations about selling on the internet? Um. I'm a person with really bad, like impulse control. <laughs> I'm like a risk taker and I'll do crazy things sometimes. And I just basically jumped right in and yeah. I, you know, I, I had no idea what I was doing, but you know, I learned, <laughs> yeah. I learned eventually, you know, what was, what was up. And, um, and it was funny when I first started, um, my first model, if you look at, um, on, in Uncommon Folk is my daughter, Electra, and she's still my one of my like best models. I just, um, I love my daughter. She's really yeah. beautiful. And um, you can see like how young she is, like in some of the pictures. And yeah, and she was, you know, she learned a lot too, starting that way about modeling. She's yeah. gotten really good at it. Oh, very good. Yes, I do see her featured. She's like in almost every picture. Yeah. Yeah. She, that she was, and look how young she was. And now if you look over at Hottie house, she's like a full grown woman, beautiful woman, and she's gotten really good at modeling, but, but yeah, we jumped in it together. Basically. I was like, Electra, I, you know, I need someone to wear my jewelry. (laughs) She's like, okay, mom. And (laughs) yeah, that's how we, that's how I started. Do you think her watching you, um, 
start a business and grow a business um, has in some way inspired her to take that entrepreneurial path as well, or, or at least given her freedom to know that um, she can do anything? Um, gosh, I don't know. I, I hope it inspired her. Like, I, I think it has. She's She's got a really natural entrepreneurial spirit, too, mm-hmm. actually probably even more so than me. Mm-hmm. Um, when she was a little girl, we called her the manager because she's very business minded. And, mm-hmm. and I would not be surprised if she, you know, started some business of her own someday. Yeah. So, oh. Divine, what does a typical day look like for you um, when it comes to running your business on Etsy? Well, um, it, um, I definitely, it has to take a backseat cause it's not my main source of income. I'm just, I'm not, I don't sell enough to like, you know, make a total living at it. So it's still like in the hobby phase right now. Okay. So, um, I have to, you know, I have to like fit it in where I can. Mm-hmm. So I, I basically just do it when the spirit moves me. Like, I'm like, Oh, I really have to do another listing, you know? And, yeah. um, one of the things that's really been getting me, like speaking of changes too with Etsy, how they've recently given us 10 photos, yeah. like it's been a double-edged sword. Like it's been a blessing, like, yay, I can find, I can stop doubling up the frames. But now I've got like, it takes me twice as long to list things. It's gotten really laborious because I, I want to like stuff every photo, you know. In, yeah. In there. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's all about... Um, you know, just cleaning up the photos as best as possible. And I I really geek out on the researching too. Like, um, I'm really passionate about vintage clothing and learning about the history of things. So I'll Mm -hmm. go into full fledged research mode and, (laughs) and start being like, what about this designer? What have they been doing? And, you know, and, and it, it takes a while for me to, to do one listing because I, I go really OCD on it. And yeah, I, I hear you. I, and I'm glad you said that because I thought, I was the only one, but I know that like really good sellers, like who really want to, who put a lot of effort into selling their product, get a lot of information about what they sell. I sell um, vintage crafting supplies and, and I like to give some information in the listing too. And sometimes you, it takes me a good 45 minutes at least just to figure out okay what year was this made you know especially with the sewing patterns um sometimes they don't a lot of times they don't have the years on them and so you have to go based on the number and the style and Mm -hmm. you know what kind of um paper that they were using and even though for me like you said it's laborious because you know i go to these these sites where they date everything and say well if it's from here to this this date this number to this number it could be this but if it has this then it could be this you know and and all that stuff and so doing just one listing takes a while yeah yeah definitely (laughs) yeah so I was going to ask particularly with clothing do you have any any resources that you found particularly helpful with not just dating the clothing, but also finding about the history behind um, the the designer of of products that you're selling or the particular styles. Um, I use the Vintage Fashion Guild a lot. Um, I should mm-hmm. probably actually join and give them some money because I'm always like <laughs> lurking around like for free. Because, um, but yeah, they they have a lot of label resources there, yeah. and um, and then otherwise I'll just you know like use a search engine and just, you know, see what I can find. A lot of times I'll find old fashioned articles or old ads and, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's like being a detective. You really, Mm -hmm. you know, I really dive deep and, and try to figure out. And, um, a lot of times you can just, um, learn yourself just by seeing examples of the, you know, what this designer was doing during this era. And, yeah. you know, and, and I'll be like, Oh, this guy was really into novelty prints during, the, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and you, you can just figure it out for yourself just by, you know, seeing what they were making their, their work speaks for themselves. Yeah. Now, how do you go about setting the price for, for the clothing that you sell? And how is that different from when you're setting the price for the jewelry that you that you make and then sell? 
Yeah, that's the hard part with vintage. For mm-hmm. for jewelry, it's way more straightforward. I I try to give myself an hourly wage, and I mm-hmm. and I figure out the you know how much the supplies cost, and I have more of a formula. Yeah. But for vintage, um, you never know you know what you what you have or you know what it's worth. So it's really more of an like a detective work kind of thing where you have to figure out what the market will bear. And so I go I usually go around and see what if I can find first of all, that particular piece on Etsy, like if it's, you know, to figure out if it's rare, if, you know, or see mm-hmm. if I can find it anywhere, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then I, and if I see that there's not a lot of, you know, of the, that designer's work even out there and, and the stuff that's out there is really expensive, you know, you have something rare and, yeah. you know, and I'm, and worth something. So I try to, I try to like kind of shoot for the middle of what the market will bear, but, but also respect like how, how hard it is to find, you know? Yeah. Because with vintage, it's like you, it may be the last example of right. that out there anywhere, you know? Yes. Do you, um, if you find a piece, a piece of clothing that doesn't have a label, do you, do you tend to not go for that because it might be harder to research or it doesn't matter to you if you, if you like the piece and you think that there's a market for it or somebody who would like it, you get it? Yeah, that's actually my biggest pet peeve. I hate it when you find something and you can tell it's vintage and it's really awesome. And then someone, some like hussy cut out the label. And I'm like, <laughs> I get all mad because I'm like, you know, how am I supposed to find it? Yes. And I try to find it, try to find an example somewhere by like putting like detailed descriptions and search engines. Like I, I really still try to research it, but in the end, you know, you can kind of tell like vintage clothing, like you can tell the real deal, you know what I mean? Like you're like, Oh, they don't make that anymore. And you know, and you kind of know the era and you you know what I mean? Like the the quality of clothing that you find, the quality of craftsmanship is just not very widely available and with like modern like ways of making clothing. So, you know, like, um, you know, you can see when something's mm-hmm. vintage and people can see when you're wearing it too. Like I, like I love to wear vintage cause I, I get stopped all the time. Like, yeah. Oh my God, where did you get that? Cause, cause they don't make clothing that well anymore. You yeah. know, yeah. that's a common, I've, I mean, I, I've noticed that to one, the quality and to just this, you can tell from the style that it's, you know, it's from not today, but yes, the quality has changed so much. Like fabrics are different now. Um, yeah. and I, I don't, I don't know how to describe the difference, but I know, you know what I'm referring to. I think it's just looks cheaper. Like why, you know, unless you're buying like really expensive designer, modern clothes, like clothing just looks so much cheaper in general. I mean, there are exceptions yes. of course, but it's just, you know, there's so many sweatshops and things and, yes. you know, it's just, you know, I think it's pretty like cool to buy secondhand clothing too for that reason you know that you're you know that you're saving something from the landfill Mm -hmm. and you're not you know buying something from a sweatshop or some like child was like chained to a machine or something you know like the karma is better for sure and actually I'm glad that you brought that up because that's a nice segue into something I wanted to discuss now I saw this on your on your in your shop page in the about section and this was something I didn't know that the fashion industry is the second largest polluter in the world next to big oil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is yeah. so crazy. I, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a lot of like dyes and, and just okay. there's like crazy and indu- there's a crazy industrial side to that. Mm. But then the other, the flip side is people just, you know, buying all of this cheap clothing and throwing it away. It's like there's millions of tons of clothing and clogging up landfills right now. Um, it's one of the biggest problems actually in our landfills are, is all this cheap clothing, you know, that's just getting like made by someone in a sweatshop and thrown away, you know? Yeah. So, it's pretty and gnarly. I, I like that you linked, you had articles that people can actually go and read to reference, you know, to get an idea of about this problem and learn more about it. Um, and, and I like that just because you weren't just saying, okay, well, they're a polluter and that's that. You, ha- you have information. So if anybody wants to read about this or learn more about this, because I, 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 li- I like recycling. I'm into recycling. So <laughs> I'll, I'll link to those or, or they're in, the articles are all linked in Divine's Etsy shop, Hottie House, which I, of course, will link to so you can go check them out. 
Now, let's talk about how you promote your Etsy shop. Do you have any specific strategies that you use or do you pretty much just put your listings up and move on? Uh, well, not move on, but like do do the basics, like do your tags and set your mm-hmm. titles to, you know, show up in SEO or do you go all out? Do you have a social media marketing strategy and, you know, do you have a blog that you use to try and drive traffic to all that stuff? Um, yeah, I, oh God, I should really start a blog, but, um, <laughs> I, I mostly, I've been doing like lots of teams lately, like, oh. um, yeah, like the sharing, the sharing, the likes. And I've noticed that sometimes when I go, go in really big and just like get a ton of like views and, and favorites that it must show up higher in the search bar. Cause I'll, sometimes I'll sell things like within a day that way, you know, mm. but, um, I do do Twitter and Facebook and, um, I don't, I'm probably the last person on the face of the planet, but I don't have a cell phone. I really want to do Instagram and I can't get their stupid app to work on my desktop computer. Oh, so I can yeah. do it for my, yeah. Cause my daughter's supposed to be running that Electra, if you're listening, <laughs> but she hasn't been posting anything, but I think Instagram is a big one, but I'm, you know, I haven't been very active there yet. Yeah. So, um, with the, with the, oh, what was I going to ask you? I know you said you 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 should start a blog. I, so I'm guessing that means that you you don't have one yet. Um, no, I don't. I started one for the jewelry a while back, but I was mm-hmm. you know kind of half assed. <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> so I, I really I really should start um, a fashion blog because I'm I I love to talk fashion, and I I'm sure I I just need to make the time to like do that for sure. Okay, and yes, I know I know that does help with the with helping to drive traffic, especially when it's aligned with what you're selling. But you did say that the Etsy teams have been helpful to you. How did you select the ones that you chose to join, the Etsy teams that you chose to join? Um, trial and error, for mm-hmm. sure. I can I can tell you my favorites are um, oh, Etsy, yes. pi- yeah, Etsy pickers and sellers are good. And you'd probably, I don't know if you're a member of that one, but they're really, they're really supportive. It's just about finding... T- finding the teams where people are active and supportive, yes. you know, and I like, um, daily Etsy sales and, um, Oh God, the name is escaping me. And <laughs> this is all automatic. So I don't have to remember, but, um, okay. Oh, I can't remember the, Oh, the A team is pretty good. They, they have a, a few good ones too. The A team. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to link to all of those as well in the, in the notes for this episode. So if anyone, well, and I assume that, some of these are affinity groups like the Etsy pickers and sellers is more so for vintage and yeah. secondhand. Okay. And then daily Etsy sales. What, how does, what's that one about? Um, it's just, uh, Oh, and devotion to promotion. Let me, let me okay. give a shout out to that one too. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. My, I had a short circuit there, but yeah. Um, so daily Etsy sales, um, the lady who started it is just a really genius, um, marketer like I'm not a strong I'm like advertising it's not my strong suit I'm like oh if someone wants it they'll they'll find it but I've been you know I realize I have to but um she's um she's just really good and she had she you know she has like a lot of good ideas and a lot of good threads so I I I joined it just at random you know and and I was like oh wow this lady knows what she's talking about like if you you know if you read her um, her advice and stuff. And, and it seems like she's attracted a lot of people who are just like really out to help each other out. So, mm-hmm. you know, you'll put something up and people will start favoriting it right away, you mm-hmm. know, and that's, and that's really what helps is you just have to find a super active team where, where yeah. people are actually going there and like, you know, and helping you favorite things. Cause I think it does help get your, you know, move your products up in the search you know, so if you look in like my dresses, I'll have like 150 favorites in like two days, you know, and that's just all like me, like favoriting people's things and having them favorite mine. And, um, but you know, it's all about getting it up there in that, you know, in the search for sure. So in addition to, to the, the members being active and, and in particular, I'm talking about the daily Etsy sales, the, team captain for this one, she also does some education too, about how to, um, I guess, I guess get more sales. 
Yeah, she's okay. she has a lot of good advice. I oh. I haven't. It's been a while since I've read because I've I've been a member of that team for for a year or two now, mm-hmm. probably like a year. And and when I first got on there, I was like, oh wow, this lady really knows you know what she's mm-hmm. talking about. Because I I do remember she had some special threads like. Uh, you know, and then, you, you know, she goes to like, she arranges Pinterest things and stuff too. But mm. yeah, she, she does have some good advice because I'm completely self-taught. I have no idea what I'm doing and I'm just trying to use the force largely, you know, <laughs> groping my way around in the dark. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I will link to all those Etsy teams and I have to say, I used to be a lot more active in Etsy teams and I think I became part of the problem was, you know how some teams just kind of fizzle out and then nothing is going on and no one is. And, and that became me after a while. Cause I remember when I was really active in teams, I would look for teams that were active and then join and then be active. And then after a while, you know, things happen, things come up and you're not quite as active, but when that happens to everyone or the majority of the team, then that's when you get like a dead team. So, yeah. um, um, go check teams out. I, I, I haven't talked about them in a while, but, um, I do think that the teams have a lot of benefit. I, I do want to say too, I think it should be balanced. Like I, I really should be listing more. Like my goal is to get my hottie house shop up to, um, you know, at least 300 items at all times. Cause I think that there's, you know, there's like a counterbalance where you should also be like listing more, you know oh, what I mean? Absolutely. Cause the more items you have also the more findable you are. Yes, I know. Yeah. I always say, and I, I try to remind myself too, that the more things you have, the more the more chances that somebody will find you for something. You just need them to get into your shop and then yeah. start looking around. And the more items you have, the more chances that that will happen. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's my goal. I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> um, it takes me forever to list things, but I'm working. I know, I know. I have the pile of doom to where it's like, you know, I have a stack of things that I haven't even gotten from you know from you know the the stash to being scanned in because I do mostly patterns and um old old books old um crafting books so I can scan them in I don't have to take actual pictures but even that you know when I got the brain you know the what do you call it brain child a brainstorm like a great, <laughs> great idea yeah. to scan them instead of taking pictures. You know, I thought now I'm going to be listing like every day, but no, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right with you, sister. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I know I should, I should really be listing more. And I think I'm going to just have to like ignore the fact that I have 10 pictures. Cause that's, what's taking me forever. Is Cause I, I get, I, you know, like for any one dress, I have five photographers and they've, I've got all these pictures to sort through and it takes me forever, you know? Yeah. Um, and the 10 pictures is, has just been like bombing me because I, I'm so exhausted after each listing. I'm like, okay, yes. I'm done for a week, you know? <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. What I started to do was, is to pile up. So like I'll spend, you know, whole day just scanning, scanning, just scanning, you know, as many as I can. Then I'll spend, you know, like in a week or two listing, but not making them live. I, I stock them all up in um, draft mode and then I'll release like 10 a day every couple of days. Oh, that is such a good idea. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> oh, dude, do steal it. <laughs> I'm yeah, stealing it. <laughs> it made me get really lazy because, you know, I could go for like two or three months and not do any scanning or listing. Well, you know, active listing because I'll just go into my listing manager and then, you know, switch 10 from draft to live. Um, oh, that's such a good idea. Yeah, that's that's good because it's hard. You get burnt out, yeah, you know. Yeah, you do. And and I like spend like, um, way too long. Like, um, I think my item descriptions are too long. Cause I'm like, I really geek out. I'm just like, Oh, oh this and that about this dress. And it's got this detail, that detail. And it's so funny because I'll, I'll spend all this time crafting this perfect item description. And then I'll get like some customer, potential customer all, what size is it? Even though I'm like <laughs> carefully listed. So no one's reading it. You know, I'm, yeah. I think I'm going to shorten those up because I yeah. spend like hours, like making them perfect and going back and editing them. And yeah. I'm, I'm crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it's it, 
there's a fine balance and I, and I know I haven't found it yet, but yes, cause there are some people who will read nothing and ask you what size it is. And then there are some who will read everything and then still have more questions like, well, you know, you said that. So how yeah. about this? And you're like, oh, um, I don't know. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I think there is a, there is a fine balance, but you're right. I think for the most part, a lot of people don't read everything and, and a lot of people skim. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, this is kind of unrelated to Etsy. I don't know if you've noticed too, but like, I think something's happening to like the human brain as far as staring at computer screens for a long time. Cause I've found that my attention span for reading, um, it has, it must have something to do with like the blue light or staring into a screen. Like my, like I'll read my own item descriptions and be like, Oh, you're a genius divine. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then I won't read someone else's, you know, I, I have like a really like the attention span of a gnat lately. Yeah. And I'm not sure if like our brains are suffering from all of this screen time or not. Well, it's just yeah. a theory well, I'm working on. No, I, I know what you mean. And it's interesting that you say that because I, so I used to try to read at least one book a month and then I, I fell off the, the wagon. And then this year I said no more because I found, you know, when you sell online and you run a business online and then you, you know, you, let's say you work to, you're you're on the computer all the time and I found oh my goodness I'm not reading as much as I I want to and so I had to force myself to you know to get back on it like you know say I have to finish one physical book and by physical book I mean a physical book not an ebook or audiobook or um uh you know the kind that you can get on a kindle or or online not because there's anything wrong with them, but because I feel like I wanted to do something tactile. And yeah. that meant holding a book in my hands and reading it without, you know, looking at a screen and what have you. And I feel like that has helped, you know, the attention deficit that, you know, that I feel like I was getting from just always staring at a screen where I'm skimming and not reading full sentences. Me too. I, I've been doing the same thing. It's funny. Yeah. And um, I also feel like a lot of it is, um, you know how you can open like multiple windows and mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Like we're always multitasking online where I'm going yes. back and forth, back and forth between yeah. all of these different things. And I really think it's rewiring our brain. So I do the same thing. I, I've been forcing myself to read and I'm reading a really good book right now. <laughs> if you want a book suggestion. Yeah. What are you um, reading? I'm reading The Vine That Ate the South by J.D. Wilkes. He's um, he's the lead singer of this band that I love, the legendary Shack Shakers. And he's a genius writer. I haven't even I haven't finished it yet. I'm only like a few chapters in, but I'm like, oh, my God, this guy is brilliant. So that's a I, I highly recommend that book. OK, so and that's The Vine That Ate the South. Yeah, um, by J.D. Wilkes. Is that um, W-I-L-K-E-S? Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right. He's, he's a really good illustrator, too. He draws these really old timey pictures. I mean, he's a genius. He's a he's a renaissance man. He's he's like the singer of this great band. And he's just, you know, I guess an all around guy like genius. Yeah. Oh, cool. Great. I have written that down. <laughs> and cool. I'll also put that in the show notes, too, for anyone who wants to read a book. Yeah. <laughs> who who... <laughs> yeah. Read a book. It's good for <laughs> yes. your brain. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. Divine, after six years on Etsy, what's something that you feel that you learned about selling on Etsy the hard way? And maybe you can save someone from having to make similar mistakes in their own Etsy journey. Um, I think what we were just talking about, especially like trying to keep the item descriptions short and sweet and to the point mm -hmm. without, you know, being deficit of, you know, all the information that someone needs. But, um, also the tags are so important. Mm -hmm. I, I really like, I think tagging your items is an art form and I've gotten better at it. And even from when I first started the vintage and I went back and I was looking at some of my old tags and I'm like, Oh, what was I thinking? No <laughs> one's ever going to find it with that. You know? Yeah. So I try to think like a person, like, looking for that item, you know, like what would they be typing into the search engine? And, and sometimes it may not, you know, it may, 
not even really have anything to do with the item, like something like film noir, or, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Or Blade Runner, or you know what I mean? Like yeah. just something yeah. where, oh, I, you know, I could see that dress in Blade Runner, you know? And I, so, you know, I'll, I'll stick that in the tags. And um, back when I used to understand the stats better, I'd see that those were sometimes the ones that would get the most hits, you know, as creative tagging is, is an art form. Yeah. yeah. And especially if you use a term that, like you said, like, um, what you, I think you said old timey dress. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like if someone specifically comes to look for that, think about it. If so, if, if not too many other sellers are using that and the dress you're selling fits that exact description and they see just, they see your listing plus just a handful of others, the chances that you're going to get that sale are so much higher because yes, there might be a style that they had in mind, but if it didn't come up in their search for old timey dress and yours did, and, and it wasn't one they had in mind, but it fits what they're looking for, you know, this, the description, then you get the sale. And I think that's one thing a lot of sellers struggle with is what tags can I use that 60,000 other people aren't already using, which will push me to page seven as opposed to page one. Yeah. And I think using layperson terms, because no one's going to look up like inverted box pleats or, you know (laughs) what I mean? Like they're not, they're just not, they're going to, you know, they're going to be looking for old timey dress or, you know what I mean? Like this. So I try to think like, you know, like someone who is not selling vintage, but is like looking to buy it, you know? Yeah. Do you, do you use any tools for keyword research or it's strictly all just brainstorming? How would I describe this dress? What would somebody who's looking for this dress call this dress? Oh, you're going to get me in trouble now because I'm about to reveal a secret. I mean, not that I'm super <laughs> successful or anything, but I sometimes I'll steal like tags. I'll like I'll go out and be like, oh, that's a good one. I'm using it. You know what I mean? I don't think you're the only <laughs> one who does that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm always lurking around my competition, seeing what they're doing. And, and every once in a while, I'm like, oh, that's a good one. I'm taking it, yeah. you know. <laughs> so I'll do it. Don't Don't send the lynch mob out after me, but... <laughs> No, well, then I'll go down with you because I do that too. I'm like, well, how come yeah, that I one mean, showed up? You know, like, oh, okay, yeah, that's a good phrase. <laughs> I know. I'm glad they show us what other people are saying because it helps. Because sometimes I'll go blank like around nine tags. I'm like, I have no idea, you know, what to even say, but I want to fill them up, you know? Yeah. The other thing I, I will do sometimes is I'll go and and this is, this is a free cheap way of doing it and it might not be the best way, but sometimes it does help me get some ideas. Um, in Google search, I'll just open another window on Google search and start typing in a tag that I've, I've already used and see what they suggest. Cause you know, now Google will suggest things. So if oh. I start typing it in and, and I see what else they suggest, then that tells me, okay, in the grand, great, greater internet world, these are what people are looking for. And then I just try and find ones that will fit into the character limit for the, for the tags. On that Etsy. is a good idea. Yeah. I'm going to use that too. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> You're a of knowledge. Yes. That's a great idea. Yeah. And I know they're paid tools, you know, like the Marmalade, I like to give them a shout out. Um, but, you know, sometimes folks might want to try other other things, too. And so if you're on a budget and you're bootstrapping it, that's another way you can do it if you're not ready to invest in, in a paid tool. What is Marmalita? What? Marmalita. It's a, Marmal- it's, it's a keyword tool. Uh, like, it, it helps you find keywords that you can use in your tags on Etsy. And it's specifically designed for that, you know, for Etsy sellers. Oh, I didn't even know it exists. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. They have a free version. Um, I think it's called the Dabbler version that you can test drive and use. And I think you can use it indefinitely um, until you're ready to use the paid version. And the main difference is that it just limits how much information you can get. So you'll still see keyword suggestions, how popular specific keywords are, and, you know, like how many listings have those keywords as tags and, you know, where they rank and whatnot. And then if you pay, you get 
a lot more information. But if you just want to check it out and dabble, you can try the Dabbler account. Oh, cool. I'm going to definitely do that. Thanks. Yeah. You're welcome. Now, are there any features on Etsy that don't currently exist that you think would be a good addition to the platform for sellers? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, the, the first thing that comes to mind is I wish we could just have our old stats back. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> said I, that I can tell stats are your thing because you That was you've that was my that. biggest that was such a big help, you know, mm, and I really yeah. think I don't know if any Etsy corporate people are going to hear this interview, but it would be awesome to have that back because I mean, I, I think they've kind of given us like a half measure back, but it's still not the same. And, mm. you know, I think that the, I wish that that was back for sure. Okay. Um, yeah. And then um, I, I kind of miss the treasuries too. I thought the treasuries oh, were a big help. Yes, I do too. I miss the treasuries because I really enjoyed making them and um, just curating stuff. To me, the treasuries were like a precursor to Pinterest. Yeah. And it, it really like um, helped it feel more like an art gallery and mm -hmm. less like um, eBay Jr. or whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever is becoming. Yeah. You know, like um, it felt more boutique -y and, you know, and it was just it was it was cool. It was fun. So, I, yeah, I wish they'd bring the treasuries back. Yeah. Well, I read the article that they released about why they took the treasuries away. And I don't know if you if you got a chance to read that, um, mm -mm. but essentially what they said, and I'm what's the word I'm paraphrasing, but it wasn't helping to draw buyers to the sites that were resulting in actual sales. And so as part of their because, you know, it's he's going through some changes and you know, revamping the platform to just get more shoppers on there. And it wasn't doing that. And so they decided to cut it off. So mm. I don't know that it will come back unless they decide to do another pilot, to do a pilot to see if there's some way they can use it as a tool to draw more people in. I mean, it certainly wasn't bringing more people in than social media does, I don't think. I, I, maybe it wouldn't bring people in, but I mean, I definitely, I bought a few things I saw on treasury. So I know it kind of works. I was like, Oh, that's cool. And I never would have seen it if I hadn't been, you know, seeing treasury. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the, the home page, the home page used to be more vibrant, you know, it used to be more like, um, interactive, like the people that you would follow, you'd see all of their posts better. And you know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry to grumble so much about the changes, though. I, I guess I don't like change. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know you're I'm not grumpy. the only one. And it's it's growing pains. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think there's more to come. So, yeah, we get ready. Watch and wait. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there something that you're doing now as far as selling on Etsy that you think is working really well for you? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I thought when, um, that by having really awesome pictures that, that, that would be like the, you know, the, that, that would be the marker of success for my shop. Mm. And it's been really fun doing a lot of the fashion photography, but, um, I think that it's more important to have lots of items to, to have people find you. Mm. So, um, I'm going to start, um, doing some of the like, you know, the, the less extravagant, um, outfits and stuff on mannequins, I think, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I hate to like have my shop not be cohesive, but I need to get my numbers, my listings mm -hmm. up. And with a mannequin, everything's perfect. She always looks the same. You can, you know, <laughs> you like, you dress her, you look hot girl, you take the pictures, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and it's done. And you don't have to like, you know, you, you don't have to worry that much about the pictures. So yeah. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what I've noticed is that the people who have a lot of items are the ones who are selling a lot. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, I, as much fun as I, I have been having with these photo shoots, I'm, I'm going to have to do it in half measure and just save the, the best of the best for like the, the live models. And I'm probably mm -hmm. going to be 
going a little bit like partially to mannequin, not fully to mannequin, but mm-hmm. I'm going to start marrying it in there more. Um, yeah, so I bought my mannequin and I'm, I'm going to give it oh, a try because I, I have to, yeah, I have to get listing. You know what I mean? I have to get yes. like at least double the amount of what I have in there, you know, and then, and then people will go in and then they will see like the beautiful, you know, pictures of the live models too. Yeah. But I'm just going to save that for like the cream of the crop and just, you know, and like the, the, you know, the less expensive stuff, you know, the less rare stuff, I'm just going to start slapping it on a mannequin and, and trying to get my numbers up. Yeah. You know, you just inspired me to do more listings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like your determination is making me think you need to do more listings too. get more stuff out there. Cause yeah. you're right. The, the more you have, the more chances that you'll get found. Those are the shops that have, that are making thousands of sales. And I, and I lurk yeah. around like, how do you do it? And it's always like the girls that have like 600 items in their store, you know, that are making yeah. a living at it. So, um, you know, it, you know, I've, I've been, since I started the clothing thing, especially I've been trying to work on a formula. Like I started, um, with the photo shoots in the studio with a professional photographer and, and that was great, but everyone was like complaining. They're like, we like your, you know, on scene pictures better. So then, you know, I went over to, you know, like on location photo shoots, like, oh, maybe that's the, that's the magic formula to help me become a success, you know, Mm -hmm. but it, it, nothing really changed really. You know, I've gotten lots of compliments on the pictures, but the sales remain the same. So mm. now my new like strategy is like, just like getting a, you know, a zillion listings in my shop. Yeah. yeah. So see what happens. Yeah. How about we do this? You get your numbers up and let's touch base. I don't know maybe six months, nine months from now and tell us. if. Oh my works. gosh, this is so <laughs> awesome. You're giving me a deadline. I need that or I won't do it. <laughs> okay. It's a deal. Okay. It's a deal. Six months. Okay. Yeah. So we're, okay. we're in November now, so it will be like summer of next year and let's see how that worked for you. And maybe if along the way you figured out some other, some other um, strategies that that helped to get those numbers up. I know between now and then, a lot is probably going to change on the Etsy website. Search is going to change. I mean, some different things will come up. So we'll give allowance for that. But knowing that having more listings always increases your chances of getting more sales. Yeah, that, that this is awesome because I'm such a flake. I, I like need someone to give me a deadline or I'll just be like, yeah, I'll do it later. You know? <laughs> but like, um, yeah, that totally. Let's do it. We'll run an experiment and see what happens. OK, so great. Now, Divine, between now and then, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to reach you? Um, well, if they have an Etsy um, site, the best way to reach me is through my Etsy shop. Just message me there. And um, otherwise, uh, I have a Facebook site. Um, so um, I can be reached on Facebook as well. Okay. All right. And I will link to Divine's Etsy shops, actually both of them, Hottie House and Uncommon Folk, and her Facebook page as well so that you can and by Facebook page, it's the Facebook page for your for, for your Hottie Etsy House. Shop. Yes. Yeah. And um, I have a Twitter. I have a Twitter too, but I don't really do much message. I it's it's pretty much on Buffer. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm like Buffer does it all for me, so I'm not really there. Okay. Okay. So I will link to those to the ones that you are active on. So if anyone wants to reach out to you, they can. Cool. Thank you. You are welcome. And I thank you for taking the time out to be on the podcast with me and for accepting my invitation to come back. Oh, no, this is awesome. I'm stoked. I can't wait to to hear it and I'll share it and show it off, I'm sure. (laughs) All right. You're welcome. And I thank you for listening to the podcast. I will be back next week. Thank you for listening. You can subscribe to the podcast in iTunes, and while you're there, please leave a review, too. Visit ConvoMe.com to leave a comment or feedback on this episode. <laughs>